Hey guys, I'm back again. Um, I want to give you an update with my mother. Uh, as some of you know, my mom had colon cancer, and she's been dealing with that for about a year and a half. She, in April of 2009, had colon surgery to remove part of her colon, and then she was on chemo because it had metastasized to the liver, and um, the chemo seemed to, at that time to take care of it, and it had shrunk down, and... Um, but they had some concerns because a lot of times chemo is not enough to get rid of liver cancer. So they've been doing PET scans and CT scans since then. And in between that time, she's had a mild stroke. And she hasn't been able to gain weight. Uh, she has a lot of diarrhea. And my mother used to be, I would say, on average about 125, 130 pounds. And now she's about 89 pounds. And she's been about 89, 93 pounds for the past year. Um, because she can't really hold food very well. It just kind of keeps running on, you know, through her. So the last PET scan showed that the spot was back on the liver, and so they want to, her to see the liver surgeon um, person to discuss, you know, what her options were for surgery. And then a couple months later, before she saw the surgeon, they did a CT scan just to see how much anything, you know, had changed at all. And the spots, you know, there's two spots, and they're still there. Um, so she saw, she met with him, I think it was yesterday, and they decided that they're going to do liver surgery on her on February 3rd of uh, 2010, I mean 2011, sorry, the year changed, so February 3rd, 2011, and um, they're not sure how much surgery she's going to need. It's in a good location where they think they can just take a small part off, but if the other spot's cancerous, like they think it'll be more of an invasive surgery. Um, either way, the good news is that the liver regenerates itself. So the area that they're taking in time, over a period of a month to a year, it'll grow itself back. So that's positive. The downside is my mom's very weak. Um, like I said, she's lost a lot of weight um, from all this stuff. Like, like I said, about 125 before, and now she's down to like 89 pounds um, around that area, and she's unable to really, you know, hold a lot of food. So. Um, that's all good, but then something concerning came up. She said to me, well, you know, the surgeon said, well, you have a lot of calcification on your pancreas, and did you ever have pancreatitis? And she said, no, I don't think so, which, if you know what pancreatitis is, it's pretty painful. It's not something you just kind of have and don't know about. Um, and six months ago, her pancreas looked absolutely fine. Um, he compared the two CT scans of the pancreas, and one was like a normal pancreas, and then six months later, the pancreas looks almost like it's shrunken down to half the size of what it used to be, and then he, you know, said to her, well, do you drink a lot? And my mom kind of laughed, because my mom does not, you know, drink hardcore, and, and especially since she's been sick, she, I think she's had maybe alcohol once or twice, and it certainly wasn't excessive, because she has problems even tolerating food. Um... <clears throat> So she didn't really know what it meant, and I said, well, I don't know. I never really heard of calcification of the pancreas. I know about calcium deposits in the heart and, you know, things like that. So after we got off the phone, I looked it up, and it said that, you know, pancreatitis, you know, can cause calcification of the pancreas. But my mom doesn't have pancreatitis. And then I thought, well, maybe the chemo did it. But then at the same time, she's been off chemo for about a year, and six months ago, her pancreas was absolutely fine. So I dug around a little bit, and then unfortunately, this is what I found. And it doesn't mean that that's what it is. It's not like I'm saying, oh, no, I know that's what it is. It's just a concern that I have, and it's that um, there can be calcification in the pancreas when there's cancer. Usually cancer of the pancreas does not cause calcification, according to what I read, and I'm by no means an expert on this. I was really just breezing through a lot of information last night. Um, but two kinds of cancer that can metastasize to the pancreas um, will cause calcification. And that is, um, I believe, now I might say it wrong, a renal carcinoma, which I believe is kidney cancer that metastasize, and then also colon cancer, which metastasizes to the pancreas. Now that's kind of scary because that's what my mom's cancer was. It was colon cancer. And it's not common. Uh, usually it spreads to the liver or to the lungs, which my mom's obviously spread to the liver. But then I started looking up, well, does the liver usually go to the pancreas? And from what I read, it usually, I mean, I, it can, um, but it seems that usually um, it seems to go the other way, like people who have pancreatic cancer and metastasizes to the liver. So I'm wondering now, well, maybe it's been in the pancreas for a while and the spots that they've been monitoring on the liver, 
is really something coming from the pancreas because the pancreas itself, it's not easy to detect early stage cancer in the pancreas. That's why usually for a lot of people, pancreatic cancer is a, you know, a death sentence in a lot of ways, but some people, you know, getting through it, but as you know, with Patrick Swayze and stuff like that, they find things kind of late term when it comes, you know, with the pan to the pancreas. Um, so that's kind of my concern. It's like, oh, you know, if it, if it went to the pancreas, then that's it. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do at that point, especially in her condition. So hopefully not. Now, of course, it is not something I, I told her. I kind of calmed her fears with it and said, well, I, I looked it up and it really could just be, you know, from this. And it would be very rare for it to go. And it would be rare, but I just didn't want to, you know, scare her or anything. So the good news is, is that during that surgery that she has on the 3rd of February, because the liver is located near the pancreas, the surgeon, especially since he has concern with all of a sudden this major calcification of the pancreas, he's going to look. I mean, it, it, it's right there. So he'll see, you know, what it is. My hope personally is if my mom does have pancreatic cancer and it is advanced enough where they can't do anything about it, that they won't even do the liver surgery. I mean, why put my mother through removing part of her liver when she's sitting there with pancreatic cancer? I mean, might as well just kind of close her up and then just tell her. Um, I would hate to see her have part of her liver removed and then say, okay, we'll heal from this. And by the way, you got pancreatic cancer and there's not really much we can do about this. You know, why bother? Um, hopefully it's not that, but we'll, time will tell. <clears throat> it's... It's pretty good that I have a timeline now of when she's going to be in the hospital because I know for myself I have to call a few doctors and I haven't gotten around to doing it because I want to stay in denial. I'm not doing anything about it. I'm just, I don't know, I keep telling myself tomorrow, 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 and tomorrow I'll eat better. Tomorrow I'll call a doctor. Tomorrow I'll stop doing this or that, and I'm not. Um, I kind of hit that point with stress where I'm just not doing anything to help myself really. I mean, I'm... Meaning, like, you know, you guys know me. Well, if you've been watching me, you know me. I've been using a juicer. I have been exercising. I have been doing all these things. And then finally the stress hit a point where I stopped. And now I'm eating, like, Cheetos and Tootsie Rolls. And I'm not sleeping right. And I'm not seeing a doctor. And I'm ignoring my health problems. I'm not, you know, really doing anything about it. And I feel so much worse than what I did when I was taking care of myself. And it's my own fault. I mean... No one's responsible for me. I'm responsible for me. But it's just sometimes I think, and, and maybe some people can relate, you hit this mental thing of, well, just screw it. I don't want to do anything anymore. But at the same time, I'm smart enough to know, okay, that's depression. That is not you. You have got to somehow break this funk and just keep making yourself do it and just do what you have to do. It just remains to be seen if I'm going to do what I have to do until my brain and my body's ready for me to do what I have to do. Um... You know, my roommate who I live with is really the only person I see because I don't feel well a lot. It's just the winter gets him down. He's been having a lot of problems at work. He uh, is having money issues. I'm having money issues. My parents obviously can't help a lot because they obviously are strapped with both being on retirement, my mom with cancer and everything. And it's just, um, it just feels like uh, that there is no light at the end of the tunnel, but I, yet I know that there there is. And I even, you know... I don't take my own advice very well, but I told one of my friends recently who's sick that, look, in the end, it's going to be okay anyway. I mean, no matter what happens, if I drop dead in five minutes, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay, but when you're in it, it's not okay. And it's hard. There's emotions at play. There's thoughts that go through your head. There's um, physiological responses to stress that you have. There is concerns, worries, rejection from other people that you fear. Um, it's just, it's hard for anyone that goes through this. And, you know, someone said to me recently, wow, it seems like you have a lot of bad luck. And well, maybe, but I said to him, or just life. And he said, okay. And I didn't really know how to respond to that. But the thing is, is people, most people, some are lucky, but most will go through stuff. What I'm going through now, maybe you went through 10 years ago, or you will go through 10 years from now. The point is, it's just timing. It's just what's happening to me now. This doesn't define me. This isn't the end-all, be-all of me. I'm in a bad place. I am not happy in my life. I don't want to kill myself. 
I mean, that defeats the purpose because my hope is that it gets better. Um, everyone has their time and it's just a matter of what you do with it. It's okay to fall apart. I've always said that. That they always act as if you're supposed to be happy all the time. You're supposed to be productive all the time. Look, if I crawl into that bed and I lay there for 48 hours, what's it to you? If I was happy, no one would complain. So if I'm sad, why complain? It's, you know, someone also recently, last year, lost their parent. And they said, well, I'm trying to move on as fast as I can. Why? You don't have to. You know, society says, oh, you should be back to work in this amount of time. You should be doing this in this amount of time. Who says? Look, if you lose a parent or a friend or a loved one and it takes you two years to feel better, it takes you two years to feel better. So what? You know, you'll get through it things will change, you'll be moved in directions that you'll find the right people to help. It's okay to cry, it is okay to feel miserable, it's okay to question God, it's okay to not believe in God, it's okay to believe in God, it's all those things are okay, it's where you are right now in your life. And I just don't think that anyone should push you to do more than what you're capable of doing. And one of the, the worst things that you can hear from people is, well, better be safe than sorry. And that's like this pet peeve I have when people say that. Well, that automatically assumes, do whatever the doctor says, because better be safe than sorry. But the thing is, is what if what the doctor does makes you worse? Or what if pushing yourself makes you worse? Sometimes it's not better off. Sometimes it's okay to wait. If things got a little bit worse, it's what you have to deal with. It's the card you're dealt. But don't let anyone scare you into moving so quickly that you are not making the proper decisions for yourself. i rather make the wrong decisions and drop dead than make the right decisions and suffer all the way to the end and not have peace of mind. So, um, kind of rambling, you know, at this point. And I was going to tell you about some crazy dream that I had, but I'm kind of running out of time, so I'll just tell it, you know, another time. But, yeah, so that's where I'm at now, uh, so February 3rd. My mom has can uh, my mom has cancer. Yeah, of course. My mom has surgery, and we'll see what happens. What they find, if it's not anywhere else, this could be the end for her as far as the cancer goes. Um, and we'll see. But other than that, I just want to wish you all a happy January 11th of the 11th year, 2011. So one 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 one. Um, and that's all. So I'll talk to you later. And you know, thanks for all the supportive emails that I get from people. And I hope you guys all have a good day. Hey guys, I'm back again. Um, I want to give you an update with my mother. Uh, as some of you know, my mom had colon cancer. And she's been dealing with that for about a year and a half. She, in April of 2009, had colon surgery to remove part of her colon. And then she was on chemo because it had metastasized to the liver. And um, the chemo seemed at that time to take care of it. And... It had shrunk down, and um, but they had some concerns because a lot of times chemo is not enough to get rid of liver cancer. So they've been doing PET scans and CT scans since then, and in between that time, she's had a mild stroke, and she hasn't been able to gain weight. Uh, she has a lot of diarrhea, and my mother used to be, I would say, on average about 125, 130 pounds, and now she's about 80 to CT scan just to see how much anything, you know, had changed at all. And the spots, you know, there's two spots and they're still there. Um, so she saw, she met with him, I think it was yesterday, and they decided that they're going to do liver surgery on her on February 3rd of uh, 2010, I mean 2011, sorry, the year changed. So February 3rd, 2011. And um, they're not sure how much surgery she's going to need. It's in a good location where they think they can just take a small part off. But if the other spot's cancerous, like they think it'll be more of an invasive surgery. Um, either way, the good news is that the liver regenerates itself. So the area that they're taking in time, over a period of a month to a year, it'll grow itself back. So that's positive. The downside is my mom's very weak, um, 9 pounds, and she's been about 89, 93 pounds for the past year um, because she can't really hold food very well. It just kind of keeps running on, you know, through her. So the last PET scan showed that the spot was back on the liver, and so they want to, her to see the liver surgeon um, person to discuss, you know, what her options were for surgery. And then a couple months later, before she saw the surgeon, they did